What is Lady Ada? Hey, everybody, and welcome to Show and Tell, yet again, hosted by me, Lady Ada, Mr. Yes. Lady Ada. Thank you so We're much. Here. When we have Noah and Pedro, or we have JP, or we have Liz, or we have Melissa, uh, all helping out with hosting. That's amazing and wonderful. Um, but it's always glad. I'm always glad when we get a shot to see these amazing projects with our sure. own eyes. So for the next 25 ish minutes, we're going to check in with people around the maker community, Adafruit folks and more. See what they're up to, what they're hacking and coding, soldering, roboting and more. First off, Jay. Jay, what are you making this Jay. week? Um, well, I did an upgrade. This is actually for my little robot that I take with me to events and stuff. And I've upgraded it recently with some vinyl stickers and then, of course, the legs. It has the Aussie spider legs now. That's nice. But see, it's a really like, nice type of like thing. Of course, yeah. the face recognition still works. Um, I have like magazines over there, so it like sees them and goes crazy. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I just went on and did that. I'm just adding some more little, little technical detail upgrades to this because uh, one thing I saw at Silicon is a lot of photos and stuff. It looks kind of like weird, so I'm trying to give it a little bit more character. And the Aussie spider legs is just always a cool addition. Like, it just looks cool no matter what you do. Plus, the little vinyl stickers actually it's kind true. of look very, it's very. Like you, you, have to, you have to design robots for a few different things. One is like it has to, you know, it works. It's a companion. It's a friend. And then you see the photos of it that other people take. So you're like, oh, let me make sure I can have it photograph well, too. Oh, yeah. It's kind of yeah, like being a, a modern chef where it's like you have to make your food look good on Instagram and also on the plate. It's definitely one of those feelings I'm having, especially with this, because since it's attached to a fanny pack, it does slide a bit. So I'm yeah. working on something already to fix the sliding portion problem of it. But I'm hoping with the next event, which I believe the next event that I'm going to be attending is uh, Maker Fair Rome, which is in like oh, two, wow. three weeks. Yeah, I'm going to be flying out to Rome. Um, so I want to make sure it's like good and ready for photos and stuff like that. Because, you know, yeah. I want to make sure I, I want to make sure that after photos look good. <laughs> yeah. So it's definitely one of those situations of like doing my best to upgrade it and stuff. And so far, the details I've added have just been fixes from other problems I've noticed. But yeah, that's pretty much just it. It's just, it still works. It's adorable. It's cute. It does stuff. I have a soundboard ready too, but currently I'm working on the sounds. Um, I haven't gotten it down yet. So far, I just got yodeling and I kind of want to turn yodeling into a different noise. That's cool. Not sure yet what yet, but it should be a fun thing to figure out. Yeah, maybe different languages if you're traveling abroad. And then the other thing you could do is uh, put a QR code on it. So maybe it can automatically Photoshop itself look better in photos. You got all sorts of <laughs> yeah, the main problem with like having languages and sounds is because humans are, you know, simple minded people when it comes to stuff like this. I'm thinking about just having a, my old version of the uh, Android beeps from like Star Wars because yeah. that people will just start, you know, pushing their own thoughts on the robot. And instead yeah. of me telling you it's saying something, you'll yeah. just start having a conversation with it. You'll just be like, yeah. oh, you know, kind of like R2. R2 is cute. You don't know what R2 is saying, but it's like, it's cute. It's so happy. Yeah. 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 I mean, most of the time, because it does have that weird scream one where it spins around. Yeah, like, we get, we get shot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like that one and that one. But yeah, I want to try something like that. And I'm hoping I can get it done in the next few weeks. That way, um, when I go to Rome, I have a new upgraded version of the Furbot with me. Right on. Okay. All right, Jay. Well, thank you so much. Keep coming back. And thanks for sharing your robots and more. We'll look for your vids on the DigiKey channel, on social media, and more. Right. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thanks, Jay. All right. I've been looking forward to this all day. Jeff. Jeffler. You've Hello. got something amazing to share. Yeah. I've been working on the Pico W and we got through some milestones in this past week. So let so me find Pico the Pico W, wireless Raspberry Pi Pico. Yeah. And of course, I'm working with CircuitPython. So let's just see what we can do here. Okay. You're connected. Okay. CircuitPython. Pico W, it says that. Eight beta. Yeah. Pico well, we, W with RP2040. We've this before, and of course the LED blinks now, which is going through the Wi-Fi chip. But we That's do right. a lot more. We okay. can now associate with a Wi-Fi network. Dun, 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 dun. We print out all that information. Ooh, IP addresses, gateways. IP addresses. DNSs. This is amazing. We can do uh, DNS and ping. So oh. that resolved oh. google.com and sent out pings and got them back in pretty good time. That's pretty fast. And let's see what's next. Oh, we get the time oh. the network. So we're oh. using UDP packets. Okay. And what time it is? Yes, it's September It's September 21st. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that where you were September 21st? <laughs> when you... 
And now at I think night we've hit when we like demoed a, this PQW. Yeah. I think we've hit a bug now because it will start timing out everything. So we're just going to restart here and continue our little demo. We've got one more. It's a live demo. All right. What else can you do? Okay. So we're going to connect to Wi Fi. Connect to the Wi Fi again. Okay, good. Oops. And we can Ooh, fetch over HTTP. You get Wi Fi data. You get data over HTTP. So you have uh, some basic socket stuff working. The basics are really solid, and I've got to give a big thanks to both the Pico SDK people and MicroPython. There is a great basis to build this on top of, and it really made this easier than we both feared it would be. Yeah, so the cool thing is, is that you're connecting to, uh, we have actually a special server, Wi-Fi test.afood.com is a special redirected server that does not require SSL because we have so many modules that don't have SSL. Yes. So... This is an unsecured connection, but it just proves that you can get data. And there's still a couple of websites you can use that are I think unsecured. Apple had something, because I was testing out a, I have an old Mac that... Uh, oh, that's right. You had the old uh, Mac OS 9. Yeah. And it didn't have TLS 2. It had TLS like 1.1. 1. 1, and yeah. so we could only connect to, like the, the only site is. in the world we could connect to was the <laughs> it was Wi-Fi our test, test. But it worked. But it did work. Yeah. Very cool. All right, yeah, Justin. So we, this, this is, is the latest data, right? This is the latest pull request. This is not... Uh, in the CircuitPython beta yet. Well, we just um, pull request in the latest beta. But if beta. people wanted to try it out, if they just want to experiment, take a you look can, at it. You can grab this branch and build it. And soon, I hope yet tonight, we will, uh, that PR will be green. And that means there's an artifact in there, a UF2 that you can download and try it out. Yes. Uh, and this is the basics of what works. And, you know, there's at least one bug. But we are at the <laughs> point where <laughs> at least one bug. She laughs. Uh, we would love to start hearing some feedback. Uh, I'd like to hear, I tried this too and it works, but uh, you know, if you can boil down the the steps that get you to where every can, everything times out, that would be helpful too. Yeah. yeah. So we'll just for, very, early, for, very early. For context for everyone, so this is referred to as the PyCal. So you'll see that we have a bunch of bells that we're releasing. And if you um, have lived through the last few years, ESP8266 was very interesting, low-cost Wi-Fi. A little hard to use, um, but the next generation of Wi-Fi devices and then the ease of something like CircuitPython is almost here. So yeah. we're looking yeah. forward to being able to do all the things with CircuitPython over Wi-Fi. Yeah, I didn't show you any of the code that's running, but it is just the same code that you would use on an ESP32, for instance, cool. and very similar what to what you'd use with a Nina or an Airlift. So it will be just as easy uh, once we get the bugs worked out, once we get the functionality. Yeah, and you just got the working like two hours ago. Two so hours ago. Yeah, like this a, is new. This is a fresh, hot yeah. cow delivery. Well, uh, cutting, <laughs> cutting edge stuff. This is why people tune in to Adafruit. Like, this, oh, is, yeah. this is the most advanced thing going on this in microcontrollers right now, this second. Yeah, so people can uh, check it out. Just remember, it does not support SSL yet. That's going no. to be a bit of a lift. It's probably going to be a couple more weeks until yeah. we get that integrated because uh, every other Wi-Fi platform that has SSL, we've been using it, it in a different, it's not built in with bare SSL, it's been using something within an SDK that's already been done. So this is going to take a little bit more yeah, um, effort. Jepler's yeah. ready, but he's going to take a little break, do a couple <laughs> keyboards. Yeah, we've get got wound some keyboards, up, get, get excited. Uh, stuff, and we, I'll do some bug fixing on version 8 and then dig into SSL and find out what uh, what we can do there. Okay. All right, delightful. And uh, Jeff and all the chats, everyone's really excited. Everyone's so, super excited. All right. so, so good work. Well, this is one of those things the, you never know what's going to happen. Chat, in the Discord chat, I will share a UF2 with you all since it's not oh. quite on GitHub Hello, yet. So go to, go to our Discord. You get a UF2. You get a UF2. <laughs> oh, participants <laughs> on UF2. Show and tell, get a free UF2. All right. I know you have a pie count. And a so. year supply of rice aroni. Okay. Install it now. Yum. Enjoy. Right. Thanks, Jeff. All right. Now, Pedro, what do you got cooking this week? Hey folks. Hey guys. Oh man, that is so I'm awesome. Prepared for that. We were laughing about, do you remember WEP on Pocket PC? Like we yes. used the WAP. We've come yes. such a long WAP. way. Holy crap. Okay, yes, so I, this week. I, I remember <laughs> it all too well. <laughs> I don't know. No one mentioned it. I'm like, oh my God. Ah, why Sorry. did you say that? I remember that? having to install was... Trump at Winsock. Yep. Yeah. And it was always so like, why week... is CCP coming through a co company called Winsock? Like, it was so weird. <sighs> Anyways. And the way you got like apps was like some sketchy place. It's like, oh my god. Yeah. Why, why is this so good times. No, not good times. Good security. <laughs> not good times. All right, so, 
Oh man! So this oh, week's uh, I know the this week's demo is uh, or project was to demo super awesome addition to Adafruit AO, uh, IO in Whippersnapper. Brent added the ability to um, control servos. So what we wanted to do was uh, get some inspiration. Like uh, you always do, Lamar. You find like a Kickstarter that I don't know is it going to make it or not? Because we could easily make yeah, this. Project. We can make yours now so, if you want. So. Yeah. So this is. Um, reactive actions so co2 is triggering the servo on this little uh canary crow so when crow. it reaches over a uh, thousand uh parts per million it'll like die on you so kind of yeah. just demonstrated it there you can see it's over because we're talking so much and then you can just control this with a uh, slider in here so that's cute yes yeah, it's whippersnapper no code servo support yes. scd 30 and 40 support so yeah. um we're adding more and more sensors and devices yeah. all the mm -hmm. time but, but when we had in servo and we had also the co2 sensors like we should see and we also added actions where you could have one feed affect another feed and i was like this is i was like basically That's i made you guys cool. into beta testers i was like this should work find out and you said it was actually really easy and it was a great demo to prove yeah. that um whippersnapper is actually a way you can make fairly complicated yeah. iot projects without any coding at all yeah i could never build this without it having... too easy yeah it's no this easy. is freaking awesome because this is turning all of our you know components and the stemma connections into like little electronic legos or why aren't you it? suffering legos? more it's too easy <laughs> <laughs> no this makes me so happy yeah. I, I love my job oh my god this is so cool I know. but um i tested it with a bunch of other stuff like the pir sensor the the what is it the magnetic latch thing the uh, the beam splitter so halloween's coming up this could have been like a spider lowering like device so so yeah. many ideas and projects you can do with the upcoming holidays. So super cool. Definitely check it out. We have all the three printed files for this on the, the, the Learn system. And of course, step by step on how to set up your actions and your whippersnapper and all that. This is using the QDPI32 uh, Pico. So yep. super low cost uh, way to build. I don't know. Kickstarters, you C don't C know C if C it will happen or not. Kind of like it's up. covering its eyes. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I can't look at this. It's too easy. Okay. Right. So yeah, go check it out. Uh, three right. today, we uh, covered all the three files and all that. So check all that out. It's super cool. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, all right. JP and the Tower hey. of Power. Which go right what's going on. on here? Yeah. So this is a segment that I want to call Honey, I Shrunk the Linear Actuator and Turned It Into a Terrifying Sci-Fi Prop. Right. So here's your typical linear actuator. It's uh, This is like a 12-volt one. And you can see we got a DC motor there. And as I put power to it, it raises this yeah. uh, this stem here. So let me shut that off and show you the uh, the miniaturized one, of course, is our little motorized slide potentiometer. It's kind of the same thing. And this one actually has servo control, unlike that one, because the analog slide pot can be read and the little DC motor that spins it up and down can react in code based on, on uh, the positioning there. So if you check out this sort of monolith thing here, bum, bum, yeah. bum, 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 bum. so yeah. I've got three of them and I built a little 3D printed housing for it. Uh, and right now I just have a little pre-programmed sequence that it'll run through. Uh, we can adjust what the pattern is in code. We can adjust mm -hmm. the PWM frequency and, and um, voltage or throttle so you can go faster, slower and, uh, and do some interesting things with it. So I am probably going to add a, a little feature to it tomorrow on my show, show how it's built uh, and let us select some different patterns. Um, but this, we're not sure exactly what it is or what to call it, but it's, it's yeah, it's a connect. It's like a, it's an art sculpture. That's just soothing to look at. I'm not sure why, but I it just like, yeah, like kinetic, it's just cool kinetic art. And I was like, well, let's use the, you know, the motorized pot mm. for something it's not really meant for. I just thought we kind of yeah. need to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really cool, inexpensive, uh, relatively speaking, robot actuator. Yeah, it's a neat so. prop. It's like where you keep Spock's brain or something, or like I don't know. Right. Sure. And you know, it's, it's, like something, it's like it's like I am judging you, and I will yeah. release the final judgment yeah. on whether you live. The answer in the, is forty-two in yeah. the cloud city. You know, it's I don't honest, know. It's upsetting how long it takes to come up with the answer to your fate. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Arm, maybe. <laughs> okay. Well, it's, it looks really cool, and it's yeah. I, I, it's neat. And did you end up doing this in Arduino or Circuit Python? Uh, it is Circuit Python, and okay. so uh, it's pretty straightforward to change out. I just have like a little 
list of lists of the positions it goes to right now. Simple, easy, and I and I named the variables high, medium, low. So I don't want to yeah. make yeah. like a little pattern of going to those three positions. But it's anywhere from zero to two fifty five is is a position it can go to along along its. Uh, in the chat, someone someone now I'm starting to think what it reminds me of. Someone said if you put all the sliders in the right spot, does like Pinhead appear? Because it kind of you know like those old you know those old science fiction movies where like you're they're playing with the pipe hole and all of a sudden they open a gateway to hell and they're oh, like, no. oh, I should I shouldn't have played with the thing that says that it opens the gateway to hell. Darn. Yeah, yeah. one thing I haven't done with this, uh, I should uh, I'll probably play with this tomorrow. Is these things can go super fast. Sometimes you need a little bit of uh, code to PID it so it doesn't overshoot forever. I kind of like how slow it is. It's a nice yeah, and casual. It, it could get even slower. I wasn't sure what I was going to hang off of it, but I put these cool chrome fader caps and yeah. they're really light. So I can go, I could actually go quite a bit slower with it too. So yeah, uh, kind of fun. It also could, could be a horizontal one if that's a, if that's a different mood you're in different. No, <laughs> no, no. Vertical, yeah. vertical is definitely the way to go. Nah, I don't like it at yeah. all. Especially yeah, this down angle. Yeah. The hey, there's something soothing about this. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Good luck to us. <laughs> this. If the machine lets us. All right. Thank you so much, JP. All right. Thanks, thanks JP. A great demo. Yeah. All right. Let's open Liz, the gateway to hell. <laughs> what you got going on? Hey, Liz. Hello. Uh, no gateways, but um, I do have this project I was working on. It's just a personal project. Um, I have the sequencer module. Um, I really like it, but it takes up a lot of rack space. So I modeled up and 3D printed this enclosure for it. Um, That's cool. fun. On the side. And I was very proud of I like the, trans the purple pinkish thing yeah. going on there. Yeah, I did um, rainbow filament. Um, and it was my first time using heat set inserts. Um, and I was That's very cool. excited that the module did slotting correctly and the holes were lined up. So yeah. That's cool. Um, Looks great. A little, 3D printing thing, so now it's a tabletop synth rather than rack mounted. Yeah, nicely done. Thank nice you. work. All right, thank you so much, Liz. Okay. Have a good one. And Bye. Mark, how's it going, Mark? What you got going on? Hello. Pretty good. Uh, okay. Let me make sure this is something. Come on, camera. It was turned on. Aha! Okay. There it is. Okay. There we go. Suspense. <laughs> this was not what I really wanted to show off, but since I had them last week, I thought I'd uh, show that I've continued to work on various amounts of pumpkins. Yeah. But what I have been working on, and I'll give some light to it, is making my modifications of my first ever circuit board that came about. So I'll quickly show. This was the one I made probably almost a year ago now. Uh, first time doing something like that. And then this winter, we had a lot of snow and a lot of rain and I got water in my basement. So I thought I need something to monitor this uh, because it kept occurring. So I finally took time to shrink it down and this board was actually inspired by the fun house, but I realized I didn't really need a screen. Mm. So I put like the main components and some indicator lights. So then if I dunk it in the water, it will show various warning signs. The beeping probably doesn't come through and probably won't actually alert me from the basement. But yeah, no, those speakers are teeny. Yeah. Um, and then otherwise works. And since it's the ESP32 S2, it has the built in Wi Fi. So I'll be able to hook that up to Adafruit IO and then hopefully alert myself uh, if and hopefully never again when I get water in my basement. Well, I like the idea of like taking the fun house and you just stripped out all the parts you didn't need. Cause I can spot, I'm like, oh, you got the three buttons and you got the piezo and you got like the, you know, stomach UT port, but you don't have, you know, it's, it's like a quarter of the size. Yeah. And it was, I wanted to design something with a microcontroller on it. And this gave me sort of a practical reason to do it and a template to follow. So again, thanks to you guys for releasing all the specs and basically everything besides having to find alternate parts for a few of the yeah, places. Yeah, that I can help you, know, you with. That's that's just life now. Yeah, uh, so luckily I did, when I first did it, I managed to order some extras because why order one when you can order like 20? Exactly, that's what I always say. And that's why I have so much storage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to need more storage soon for all this. Uh, luckily, the parts are relatively small.
but right, yeah cool. so yay now that, now that this is working i'll get it installed and can go back to programming pumpkins all right Very diy cool. iot to the rescue all right thank you so much mark thanks thank a lot you, mark. All that's right, it. that's our show and tell for tonight. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming by and showing sharing your projects. We're here every single week, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Come on by. Any project is fun to share and welcome. And uh, we'll be back next week. And we'll and, be um, back for Ask an Engineer in 10 minutes. Ask an Engineer starts in you 10 minutes. You said 10 minutes. Go get yourself a sandwich, quick, some tea. Quick, get comfy. And come right back. See you all soon.